Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be sculpting my very first 75mm miniature. More specifically, I'm going to be sculpting a miniature of Gandalf the Grey. The first thing that I wanted to do was make the armature for this guy. And since I needed the wire to be a little bit stronger than normal, since so this is going to be a much bigger miniature, I cut out about twice as much as I think I'm going to need, and then I twist that together, making a stronger wire. And do that again on a separate piece of wire for the arms and such. I also added a little armature for the staff, but later on I just use a barbecue skewer. I then pose the miniature a little bit, and connect everything together with some hot glue on a 50mm base. And then I can start adding all of the milliput. And I'm using milliput for this project mostly because it's a little bit cheaper than green stuff. And making a miniature this big with just green stuff would go through quite a lot of it, whereas it doesn't take up as much milliput. As I'm building this guy up, I add a bunch of long, thick noodles of milliput around his legs, and those are going to act as some kind of guidance for where the folds of the robe are going to be. I'll obviously edit it later, but for now it gives me a rough idea of where some of the folds should be. I also take another piece of milliput and put it onto a different 50mm base that I have, and sculpt out what's going to be the sheath of his sword. I can then add what's going to be the final layer of milliput and start sculpting that into the shape that it's going to need to be. Adding little bits of milliput over top of the large sheet that we had just added to add any details that I saw in some of the reference images I was using for this guy's robe. I can then take the sheath that we had just made and add that to the rest of the miniature. Although I believe I change how I attach this because when I attached it the first time it wasn't very strong and it kept falling off while I worked on it since I didn't add a lot of milliput to attach it. And then in the same way that I added more milliput onto the robe, I added onto like his torso area and start to sculpt in some more folds for that. I don't really need to worry about the transition between the, the lower part of the robe from the torso because I'm going to be adding a belt there and that will help cover up any defects. The next part of the process is to add on his long kind of billowing sleeves. And just like before, I add a large piece of milliput in the general shape of what I'm going to need it to be, and then later on, I'll come over to that and start sculpting all of the little individual folds. As I mentioned before, I had to reattach the sheath, and I actually add it in between the milliput and this little sleeve that I added, since there's so much milliput, it would actually like keep it in place once it has set. And as you can see me doing here, I then start working on the face for the miniature. And I've got a couple reference photos for face structure and what that's supposed to look like that I'm using to figure out what this looks like. Once I have the basic shape down, I let it set before I add any details. And while I wait for that to set, I can start working on the rest of the cloak. I then make another large sheet of this milliput, and that is going to be acting as the back of his cloak. Again, getting the general shape that I need that I'm going to change later when I add more details. I then go back to add some details to the face, and as you can see, I edit the face a little bit after it had set and add the eyes to this guy. After that, I go back to the main miniature and start adding all of the necessary folds onto the sleeves and everything else. Again, I am using reference for this, which you should always do for anything that you're not entirely sure how to sculpt, and honestly you should do it for stuff that you think you know how to sculpt, because most likely you don't know exactly what it looks like. And that's what this project primarily was, was just trying to figure out how the clothing was going to fold around the pose that I have decided to make Gandalf in. Here you can see I add a massive piece of milliput that it's going to turn into the hood of Gandalf's cloak. Sculpting that into shape, trying to make sure that everything is nice and smooth and actually looks like a single piece of cloth as opposed to a mass of sculpting material. I can then go back to the face, and using some green stuff actually, I add the rest of the details to the face. And I was kind of trying to loosely base this guy off of Ian McKellen, since I grew up watching the Lord of the Rings movies. But I don't think the face looks like Ian McKellen, I, it almost doesn't look like a face to be totally honest, but we can talk about that a little bit later. I do my best to try to make the face look a little bit aged and worn, using a needle to add in most of the details as you can see me doing here. But I think I ended up with something closer to just an angry old man than Ian McKellen. <laughs> 
But either way, once that sets, I add that onto the rest of the miniature and also give him a beard and basically hope that that will make him look a little bit less angry. And I think I'm a lot happier with how the face turned out after I added the beard than before, mostly because the beard covers a lot of the face, but that's beside the point. As I mentioned earlier, I decided not to use the metal armature I had made for the staff and take a kebab skewer and carve that up to make it like a wooden texture and attach that onto the arm with a little bit of wire that was sticking out. And then to make sure that it stays in place, I also add a little bit of green stuff and wrap that around the wire and the kebab skewer right around where I'm going to have the hand. I then add a bunch of little wires with more green stuff to start making the general shape of the staff itself which is actually based off, again, the one in the movie, although I didn't add the little pipe that you can actually see in his staff during the movies, because that was a detail that I didn't want to have to bother adding. And it's also a detail that most people don't even know about, so that nobody would notice, except that now that I point it out, you would notice. Anyways, I then go ahead and sculpt the hilt of the handle here, and you can kind of see what I'm doing with it here, although I actually make it a lot smaller than this. So when it sets, I take my craft knife and I kind of make all of these lines a little bit more smooth and sharper to make it look a little bit more like metal. Then of course I attach it onto the model itself. Then move on to start the process for sculpting his hat. Pointy hat. So I add a little bit of milliput onto the top of his head and then add two long wires that are kind of doing a crisscross over top of his head that are going to act as the armature for the hat. I can then go back to the staff now that the green stuff has set and add more green stuff over top of the wires and start sculpting the kind of wooden texture into the top of the staff. After that I take some more green stuff and start sculpting the hand that is holding the staff adding one large piece and then chopping that up with a craft knife to make the fingers and then sculpting those into a slightly more finger shape. I can then take a large piece of green stuff and add that onto the armature we had made for the hat earlier on. And while I'm still working with the green stuff, I also add the other hand that's going to be holding onto the hilt of the sword. This time actually adding on individual fingers since the hand position is a little bit more complicated than the one that was on the staff. I also wanted to add the gem that is in the top of the staff, so I take a little bit of green stuff and try sculpting that into kind of a gem-ish shape, using primarily the metal parts of my sculpting tools. After that, I take a big old lump of green stuff that I'm going to be using as the pointy part of Gandalf's hat. Pointy hat! I shape that into the right size and then I stick that onto the miniature itself, smoothing that together with some of my rubber sculpting tools. I also go ahead and add the belt I mentioned I was going to add earlier on in the video. And I sculpt that into shape and what I noticed in the art that I was referencing, he has kind of like a knot um, tied into his belt with the kind of spare belt that is left over from after he tied it. So I try to mimic that as best I can. Although you might notice I got a little confused with which piece of green stuff I was supposed to add because doing knots is always really confusing and hard to wrap your mind around. But once I figure that out, I also go and add another little belt that is attached to that that is going to be connecting to the sheath of his sword. Since most of the sword is going to be covered and you can't really see it, I don't have to worry about being too careful with this. And then to wrap up the sculpt itself, I add a little bit more green stuff for his hair. Again, I'm using reference for this to figure out how it's going to flow onto his face and around the back of his neck. And the way I go about doing his hair is by adding long noodles of green stuff that are going to represent locks of hair, and then I texture them with a needle to make them actually look like hair. But with that detail finished, here you can see the sculpt itself. And I'm a little concerned with how this is going to look. I think his face is a little bit off, but we're going to have to figure that out once I've actually started painting it. And here you can see the entire model covered in a layer of gray spray-on primer. So I start off painting this guy by adding a mid-tone gray paint and then start doing some general loose wet blending of the shadows and where I want them. I was planning on having the light source for this figure be the staff that he's holding to mimic the lighting that would have been on him while he was walking through the Mines of Moria, which is a fairly intense amount of shadow, so the actual darkest color for this guy is going to be a pitch black. And so I go around the entire sculpture doing this loose shadow layer. 
I then also add a kind of loose highlight layer figuring out where all of my main highlights are going to be. And for the highlights here I'm doing a loose glaze because I don't need any of these colors to be particularly saturated, especially since it's a gray, which is I think the opposite of saturated actually. And it's at this point in the process that I'm taking a little bit more care with where I put the shadows, especially on the front since that's where most of the light is going to be focusing on the folds in his kind of torso and the cloak as he gets closer to the staff, which is of course the light source for this mini. So I then start to work on his face, starting with the darkest tone that I want to use for the face, and then after I've added that over everything, I begin to add the highlight tones with a slightly lighter color over top of that. And because of the size of this miniature, I can just get away with doing wet blending for all of this stuff. Which is really helpful because, as I was mentioning before, if you use glazing, it can tend to desaturate the highlights that you add. And so if you can use wet blending instead of glazing, that's usually preferable. But that also depends on the style that you're going for. If you're going for a super desaturated, maybe kind of grim dark vibe, then glazing could be a perfect technique. But I want his face to be fairly bright since it's right next to the light source. Then to quickly finish up his face, aside from adding the pupils for his eyes, I add the light gray for his beard and hair. Then I go in with the same paints I was using for his face and paint his hands. Again, primarily using wet blending as the main technique. I also don't hesitate to make it nice and dark, especially on this hand that's really far away from the light source. I then quickly go and paint his staff with a brown color. But before I got too carried away with that, I wanted to add a black wash over all of the clothing and cloak on this guy, as well as his beard. And that way I could bring out all the details that I sculpted as far as the flows of the cloak and texture of his hair. I then do a quick dry brush with a brighter brown over the entirety of the staff to bring out some of the texture. And then really quickly darken that by adding a brown wash over top of it. I then go back to the cloak and add a little bit more dry brushing to kind of strengthen some of the highlights that I had kind of covered up a little bit with the black wash that we added. I then move on to paint his leather belt, going over with a mid-tone brown, and then I go over top of that with a dark brown wash. And I'm doing this before I add the highlights to make there be some amount of difference between the staff and his belt. And of course, once that has dried, I then go in with the aforementioned highlights, adding a little bit of yellow into the brown and kind of going over it with a slightly loose, scratchy highlight to make it look like the dings and scratches that would be in a piece of leather. I then go to paint the crystal in his uh, staff, painting a lightish blue white and making a bit of a gradient from bright white at the end of the gem to a light blue at the base of the gem. After that's added, I can start doing some of the OSL. So I go around uh, most of the area around where the staff is with a white dry brush, as well as a little bit of glazing with the light blue that we added as it gets farther away from the light. And I do quite a lot of this OSL to really give the idea that the main light source that is a part of this miniature is this part of his staff. Uh, but to be totally honest, I think I might have gone a little bit over the top with this, but object source lighting is always so much fun to do. It always looks so good, but you can also definitely do too much of it. Then take a little bit of blue paint and paint the pupils in his eyes. Then go in with some metallic paints to paint the few little metal bits there are, like the belt buckle as well as the sword itself, starting with a darkened metallic paint and then adding on top of that a highlight with a brighter silver. And then with that detail added, the miniature is finished. So I'm gonna be real with you. I don't like how this miniature turned out. There's a lot of things that you can get away with when sculpting miniatures when you're sculpting them this big that you can't get away with sculpting them when you're doing them this big. Um, his face just looks off, it's too flat, and his eyes are way too big, and some of the anatomy is off, like one of his hands is significantly larger than the other. 
I think that the cloak turned out well. I think the belt is fine. Um, and I like the staff and some of the OSL turned out. But overall, the face is just such a key detail to a miniature, especially and when it's this big, to have it look as off as it does. I don't, I don't like it. This is, was a bit of a flop. But even though it was a bit of a flop, it is still useful because now I know on a smaller scale or on a bigger scale, uh, what exactly I need to improve on. Because obviously when you're doing them really small, as I mentioned before, you can get away with a lot of stuff. But you don't want to be getting away with it, you want to be doing it as accurately as possible. And so making this larger miniature has really told me what is it that I need to improve on and what specific details do I mess up? So I make faces too flat and I make the eyes too big. So now as I'm sculpting smaller miniatures, I can focus on those details. And this is one of my favorite parts of this hobby. I never feel like a miniature is a total failure, even when it doesn't look good on its own because every miniature is one step in improving your sculpting ability, your painting ability. You always look at the miniature that you just painted, look at it, go, this is awful, but now I know what to do next time. And that is an encouraging thought. But I hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless. Um, if you did, leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, all that stuff is super helpful for a growing channel. And also leave a comment if you have any questions. These videos that I'm doing over the summer are all pre-recorded, so I don't know that I'll be able to get back to every comment super quickly. Right now, I'm not actually at home where I record my videos. Uh, and if you're interested for more information on that, you can check out the video that's on my channel page. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.